thousand years ago, uh, the intellectual center of the world was Baghdad. Baghdad. Europe was busy disemboweling heretics at the time. Baghdad was open to all thought at the time, between AD 800 and 1100, around there. If you look at the advances that unfolded in that period, in that location, it includes uh, the, the, the invention of algebra. Algebra is an Arabic word. Algorithm is an Arabic word. Two-thirds of the stars in the night sky that have names have Arabic names. How does that happen? Just what, where did the naming rights come from? It came from the fact that at that time, huge advances in the Middle East, in Baghdad in particular, um, was uh, unfolded in engineering, mathematics, especially mathematics, astronomy, navigation, um, uh, physiology. And you say, well, why is that so? If you look at what was going on, they were open to all lines of thought. Muslims, Christians, there were doubters back then. Today, we would call them atheists. They would all come around a table and share ideas. If you have some philosophy that's got holes in it, someone's going to find it. And you're going to challenge you on those ideas. And what happens is the conversation ratchets up. You discard what doesn't work and you keep what does. And when you do that, you make discoveries and you make discoveries rapidly. And at the time, that period drew to a close. If you read history books, you'll typically describe sort of the, the sacking of Baghdad. It was a bad time for the city. And they say, oh, it all came to an end. However, the Islamic culture rose at other times later. And in those other times, science and engineering discoveries were not a part of it. So he asked, what, why not? You got the cultural heritage, why doesn't it show up again? And then you got to dig a little deeper from the sacking of Baghdad and you find out there was a, a Muslim cleric, Al-Ghazali was his name, who was to Islam what St. Augustine was to Christianity. St. Augustine kind of laid out the rules for how to be a good Christian at the time. A lot of people were practicing it in their own way. He codified it. He was a religious scholar, figured it out according to his own read, told everybody how to behave. There's the book. You follow this, you're a good Christian. Al-Ghazali said, you follow this, you're a good Muslim. In that text included the assertion there's the book, you follow this, you're a good Christian. Al-Ghazali said, you follow this, you're a good Muslim. In that text included the assertion, which gained influence socially, but then politically, so then it had power of influence. In there was the assertion that mathematics and the manipulation of numbers was the work of the devil. The entire enterprise collapsed and never recovered. It has not recovered since. If you look at the number of Muslims who have won the Nobel Prize in the sciences, it's one. Number of Jews who have won the Nobel Prize, one fourth of all Nobel Prizes in science have been won by Jews. How many Muslims in the world? 1.3 billion. How many Jews in the world? 15 million tops. So you look at what effect the culture of discovery and learning can have on what you discover about the natural world. It's extraordinary. So just because you're making discoveries doesn't mean it's forever. And I look at the 20th century in America as a period of great discovery. And then I see forces now operating against it. And then I look at the history of the consequences of this and I see America just simply fading into insignificance. No, it's not off of a cliff, it's just a slope. And every next day, you're a little bit further down on the slope. You barely notice it, right? Until one day you can't see over the hill that you just came from. And then you try to make do with what you have down here. And then you find out it's the rest of the world making the inventions and not you. You're trailing, no longer leading. You're not even abreast with what's going on. You're running behind trying to catch up. We have, we've... To the idea that one of our books was dictated by an omniscient being or that such a being exists. All religion could function like a placebo. And we, I mean, we, I could invent a religion for you right now that would be guaranteed to be useful. In fact, more useful than any religion in existence. And you would know it would be untrue. I mean, I could, right this moment, I could invent a religion which the precept is be kind to others, don't lie, cheat, steal, or kill. And this is where it gets novel. Make sure your children 
uh, make every effort to understand science and mathematics to the best of their abilities. And if you don't... By do the way, this, you could take that right out of Maimonides. He said that. Okay, but... And if you don't do that, you'll be tortured for eternity after death by a 17-headed demon named Dexter. Okay. <laughs> If we could spread this faith to billions right now, we would live in a better world, absolutely. If we could replace Islam with this faith, we would live in a better world, for starters. Okay? But that wouldn't lend the slightest credence to the idea that such a demon exists or that torture can, after death. Can I tell you now? This is